Good morning, bookheads. Welcome to What the Book. This, of course, is Sintra Sullivan, uh, international best-selling author from Australia. We are so happy you could join us today on this delightfully, well, for me, Sunday morning, for you guys, Saturday evening, depending on which side of this glorious blue pond we live on. MB Davis, Mark, good morning. How are you? Hello. How how uh well I'll tell you first of all how I am. Yes. Um I, I am drinking a ton of water. Oh. So much so that I feel I'm more like a waterbed person <laughs> right now. I may float away. I may so, float away to somewhere completely different. So if, You'll just have to come find me. <laughs> if we suddenly hear you vanish, you're going for a pee break. And personally, I'm going to pay. I'm going to blame our other gorgeous trio in this this devastating threesome that we have. Uh, Peyton Storm is in the house. Who told us that we all have to drink more water? Good morning, Peyton. Hi, how are you? I am not drinking my water. Smack me. No, I, I did. I had a little bit. I did. Well, look, hey. does it count? Hey. I just, I need to clarify this. You need to drink more water shenanigans. Does it count? Does it count if it, if it has, if, if it has coffee in it? Does it count? No. Damn it. Okay. So, <laughs> so I had this debate. Listen, I had this debate with, uh, with the people in my house. Okay. I can I completely understand coffee. What about tea? No, if I... it's just like literally <laughs> just a, a smidge, like not even a full teaspoon of sugar. No. And, no sugar. And no. and and if I what if I didn't even use cream? Like it just was. It's basically. Could you hear? It's like ninety nine percent water. Could you hear How the dis- Could you hear the disgust in Peyton's voice? It was like no, no. <laughs> That has to count. <laughs> Otherwise, this is possible. It's not because on. You just, uh, no, you added you added caffeine. Yes. Which is me dehydrating, right? Fuck yes, I added caffeine. Why would I be adding caffeine? <laughs> then you add. What kind of monster are you, Peyton? <laughs> I don't know Can't what this caffeine. is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear. I just talking, but I don't hear what's going on right now. <laughs> Oh my god, when it comes to caffeine. Uh, Uh, I mean, not absolutely. I mean, caffeine is a must. I drink a ton of espresso myself, but I don't count it towards my water intake for the day. Fine. (laughs) Damn it. That's where I've been going wrong. Because I'm just like. I told him. I'm totally. Okay. All right, we're moving on. We're moving on. I can't can't deal with this right now. I can't do this right now, Peyton. Of course, let's. The second. The second thing, the se- no, 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 hold on. The second thing is, oh, it God. is still where we are at. It is still our lovely co-host, Centra Sullivan's birthday, where we are, even if it's not where she is. So we need to all congratulate our lovely co-host, partner in crime, on hopefully you had a wonderful day yesterday. Should we sing? Should we sing? Oh, or, I don't know if sing. That's morning. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Okay, uh, sir, you take the uh, soprano, okay? <laughs> uh, nice right, well, one, and a two, and a three. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday oh my God. to you. So Happy birthday <laughs> to you. Happy birthday, dear Oh, my God. oh sorry. <laughs> oh good lord oh good lord thank you that was that was glorious glorious thank you very much we tried oh my god um well okay for those who may be just tuning into what the book for the first time today welcome <laughs> welcome to our little particular corner of chaos um uh, oh, to, to the people in the studio, of course, T.O., uh, who have I got? T.O. Brian, good morning. Good morning, Portia. Good morning. Um, and anybody else who wants to wander in and sit down and, and pull up a chair, uh, it is going to be a very interesting show. If this, if this is how we're starting out today, it's, it's going to be a doozy. 
going to be a doozy. Um, Peyton, I really hope you're strong enough for this one. We've had this gust on before. <laughs> um, I do believe Mark might have been away for this particular show. I think it was just Kyra and I who took on um, this beefcake of the um, <laughs> riding community. So uh, I did. Was that right? Doing, Mark. Was that right, Mark? You were away that episode, weren't you? Yeah. yeah. No, I, it was. But I heard. I heard his magnificent voice. Yeah, so and it was Kyra it was and I, and um, we we both turned into a melting pool of swoon a, over this dude's voice. So Peyton, you might want to you might want to saddle up, my darling, saddle up, my darling. Um, it could get a bit rough. <laughs> you did say you needed a this drink before. Oh, good. Yeah, well, I did, good. I did, but you know, this isn't my first rodeo, so we're good. Let's go. Oh, there we go. Hop on. Oh my. God, um, we're gonna okay. We're gonna need a safe word. We're gonna have to have a safe word. Um, my safe word is caffeine. Mom, caffeine. I'm just putting that out there right now. I'm, caffeine I'm, is my safe word. For the record, Peyton, what's your safe word? Uh, no, I don't know. I'll I'll stick with caffeine. Just with Mark, just because I'm gonna counter it every time he starts whining about it. Yeah. Yeah, well, my, my safe word's pineapple for those playing at home. Pineapple. If you ever hear Z uh, scream out pineapple, uh, yeah, they, no. Uh-oh. Don't start the pineapple debate just, going on in here. Mm, no. Just saying. All right. No. For those playing at home, of course, we are welcoming into the What the Book studio today Stephen Ross. Uh, talented poet and horror author, also uh, nipple flasher and general shenanigan causer of the writing community. Him and Tio and Brian. They not see uh, for those who who listen to us um, who aren't live. Of course, you quite often will hear us referring to the guys <laughs> that are in the studio who help out and chat and whatever else. Stephen is one of those. So welcome to what the book, Stephen. How are you? I'm doing very well yourself. Yeah, not too shabby, not too shabby. Um, Good. Uh, Mark and Peyton, of course, you both know Stephen, of course. Of course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, um, he sometimes first helps first. me. He sometimes <clears throat> helps me on book or few, but uh, only sometimes. <laughs> Help hinder. They're all the same. Look, he's 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 batting probably a fifty fifty on the win loss ratio. Mark, you're on a zero, so he's doing uh, better. You know, than me. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Peyton's our our reigning queen of book or feud, so we will see what happens oh, yeah. later on in the show for that game. Now, uh, quick, let's start off. Let's get this ball rolling. Uh, Stephen, All right. you are a we, – we often, the writing community, will wonder at the the talent that you possess with your poetry and the verses that you put up with the different VSS challenges, etc. I'll get to that in a minute. First off, I want to talk about Love of the Hunt. This is your first novel that has been released. Your first – yeah, novel, because you have a poetry book, of course. But this is your first – you were doing the poetry book when you were here last time. So since then, you've released – a full-length novel called Love of the Hunt. And it is a horror for those playing at home. It is a horror. I have read it. It is gruesome. It's very detailed. Uh, and you do, you do openly say, now let me get the wording right. I've been poking around in your skeleton closet. Um, <laughs> weaver of dark words with a penchant for pen and tails, both visceral and distorted. Disturbing, um, often find you lurking in bloodstained shadows of the horror genre. Now, okay, question. I have to, I have to ask this as a horror author. <laughs> I'm not a horror author, of course you are, but how do you separate? Okay, so if you're writing, and I've read your book, so I know the scenes, and you know the scenes that I'm talking about, the scenes that are very confronting, how do you separate that from your daily life? Like, how do you compartmentalize that? <laughs> I don't know. It, it, it's always part of daily life, and sitting in the back of your head, or at least my head. Um, I just don't let it overwhelm me. Uh, if I get it out in words on a page, it seems to settle 
and doesn't sit there at the front of my head. Interesting. So by putting it down on the paper, you no longer have it swimming. Yeah, I release it. I let it out to the masses. Interesting. Because I can't do that. I'm intrigued by this. Um, <clears throat> do okay. Do you ever do you ever gross yourself out? <laughs> <laughs> like you know, well, do you ever like, like that way or other ways? Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> there is a reason. I mean, <laughs> no, 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 no. There is a reason <laughs> why I don't write erotica, and that is because I obviously I just I get to a point where I'm just like, look, I just can't write this anymore. I'm too worked up. Can't do it now. <laughs> yes, for those playing at home, you're welcome. Um, <laughs> Do you ever gross yourself out? Do you get so in, like, where, ah, do you find a line? Is there a line for you? I think that might be a better way of putting it. <sighs> Not yes, really. As Brian I mean, says, Brian's asked that. How do you define the line? I, I, the only line I ever see is, is if somebody puts something on paper or in film that is just disgusting for disgusting sake. At that point in time, I have no real interest in it whatsoever. It, it, it has to be part of the story. It has to be a reason there. It has to be illustrating a scene, not just a, a murder set piece. That's not really what I like. You want more than just shock value. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, anybody, uh, the human centipede. Oh, uh, stop it. Something like that. Just, oh. yeah, no. No. Have you seen that? Paper? No, it, it's, it's, Kathy, <laughs> <laughs> have, have, have you seen that show, that movie? I've seen enough. Oh. I've seen enough. See that to me, it's, it, it classes as a horror, but that to me is just there's okay. Yes, there's a story to it, but oh, it's not not much. No, no. So it's that shock value I don't particularly enjoy in a horror aspect, and and unfortunately. I mean, but it goes for any genre. Um, you know, if you're, exactly. yeah, if you're writing erotica and all you've got is, you know, fucking from page one to page Venus 300, the the then, you know, it's the same thing. It's just got no, no value to me. Uh, it's the story okay. that's relevant. Sorry, Payton. With, hold on, hold on. <laughs> okay. So with that genre, though, it, that is the forefront. That, erotica? That's the line. Right. Yes. Ah. So I've read there, there's there's some erotic out there that really it's literally they meet up and the rest of the book is is, you know, what positions they can get in. And then that's you know, that's that's the gist of it, because sex is the forefront of it. Romance. I have read romance. They call it romance, but it's just like one big fuck session. And I don't like that. <laughs> so but if see, you want to do that, that's great. But label it correctly. But, uh See, you've got different different grading, though. So you've got your romance, you've got your erotica, and then you've got your porn. And, and uh, yeah. I guess there's I, lines I for everybody, you know, where it fits in. I just need a story. I don't mind them getting naked and getting nasty. I'm fine with that. I just and I and you know, even in the horror, I I don't mind people getting all cut up and all over the place. Just give me a story that goes along with it. Absolutely. Um like uh, something very visceral, like uh, Romero's Day of the Dead. Very gory. There's intestines and everything else all over the place, but there's a a terrific story behind the entire thing. And everything that's shown, I mean, while some of them are set pieces, it's all it fits. It isn't there just to shock you. Yeah, there's a method to the madness. Yeah. Like I, I, when you say uh, like a romance it, where it's just fuck, fuck, fuck all the time, but is how is it done? Is it done as part and parcel of the story, or is it just a porno? Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's just randomly thrown in there because you couldn't think of anything else to put in there. No pun yeah. intended. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> 
then yeah, that that becomes an issue that to me that that takes it a little out of the uh, romance genre if it just turns into what positions how many times. I do think there's actually a ratio. I'll have to Google it. I do think I think there is like a ratio. If it's any more than three times in a book, is classed as erotica as opposed to romance. Don't quote me on that, but it is some weird yeah uh, ratio that. That if you're looking at trad published books, that, that it has. Mark, how are you for yes. um, drawing the line in horror? Mm. Right. Well, based on what you guys were just talking about, I'm dipping the pineapple in the cafe. Right now, <laughs> the that up. Um, but I, I don't. You know, that's a good question. I would. I, most of my stuff would probably be more like horror light. It's that walking that line between. Is it horror or is it like dark fantasy? I don't get super gory with things that I do, but what I do put in there, I, I kind of am with uh, Stephen. I, I include, there's a point to what's there. It's, we need to see how the character reacts to that thing, how it does, how does it impact the character and their journey. So I try and definitely be thoughtful about it. But, but as it's, like I have things plotted out, but not all the details <clears throat> so some of these things just come to me in the moment and it's kind of like oh that's interesting and then i have to think about why it's there is that serving a purpose and a lot of times it does it's like the subconscious mind's kind of like working with you in the and you're like okay that's interesting i think it has a i think it has a purpose to have a, a purpose I think as authors, Brian's bringing up an interesting point that um, whether, you know, you agree on the context as it serves as an art, but the same rule applies to editing prose. Um, is the sentence necessary or are you in love with your own voice? Brian, I'm in love with my own voice. Can you not tell that? No. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my side job is like, for one, <laughs> for a, <laughs> you know, double A, double five, press one. If you just want me to talk mm. about my grocery hey, whoa. list, whoa. press two. Yes. If, you, <laughs> if you want me to dive Keep deeper. No. Happy. Happy. Now, no, uh, one, 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 one. <laughs> uh, now, interesting point, no. Where's like, my towel? Um, no, no towels. Uh, interesting point, though, uh, in editing. Um, uh, all right, editing. The the value in an editor to me is uh, insurmountable. I love and adore my editor. I, I don't self-edit because I don't see my own problems. I don't. I, I think that, you know, my first draft is phenomenal and it's – a masterpiece and should be bought by everybody. And then it turns up back on my doorstep from the editor covered in red and I'm like, what? Where did I, where did all those errors come from? They weren't there when I sent it. Uh, so I'm a big pro, uh, and professional editors when it comes to writing. Um, and doing things like exactly what you've said, Brian, taking out entire sentences. And you can even do it as you're, you know, if, if you're that way inclined or that talented. And it is, it is an extra talent to be able to read your own writing and go, eh, that sentence really doesn't need it. Um, although I've seen, we've had authors on here before that, you know, have written a 140,000 word first draft and then having to cut it down to a more palatable size, uh, which you would have to cut out an awful lot of wordage. Uh, Peyton, did you, when you were doing your draft, so you go back to your first book, All Hell's Bells, of course, it just got released um, uh, just, what, 10 or so days ago. Um, mm -hmm. Did did Are you a chopper? Like, do you write everything down and then chop it all out? Like, how do you go about that? Uh, well, I I don't edit as I go, right? So my first draft, I go through it. Then I go back around, start over, and read through it. If I come across a scene that I'm kind of questionable about, I have like a color code system with highlighters. Oh. And mm. I have like every color is assigned, you know, it means a certain thing. So I go through and I read. <laughs> and if a sentence, if I'm like, 
mm, I don't know if this goes here, then I will strike it green, right? If I am not sure I want a word that sentence that way, then I'll strike it pink. So I go through the whole first, you know, second draft that way. And then when I go back around, I know exactly what colors. So this, I'll say, okay, today I'm only working on green. So I go through my pages and look for everything that I'm you, and then reassess it. You, that, that sounds quite brilliant. Actually. It does sound brilliant. And I'm, and I'm, I'm mildly aroused by the whole concept because, uh, you know, <laughs> highlighters. Um, now, but hang on, wait, 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 just, i got to ask, do you write by hand or on laptop, Peyton? I write my first draft by hand. Stop it. Oh, my. Uh, yes. And then another way, kind of a, a self-editing way, is then I, like, every week or so, I will type it up into a Word, uh, Google Doc, right? I'm seeing it a second time. Right. So I can make notes there. But once it's typed up, I, I print it out, oh. and then that's when I take my I take my um, highlighters to it. So at the beginning of my little binder, I have a note that says what each highlighter color means, and then I just start swiping mm. away. So and it makes it easier on me. Like I, it it tames the chaos yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. No, I can understand so, how that would work very well. Yeah. Yeah. So I can say. Okay, so today I'm just going to go through and look at words and or sentences that I'm thinking about removing altogether. So I'll say, okay, so that's green. So I ignore anything that's not marked in green. Huh. And I, uh, that's, uh, a task, that's a task that I can check off. See, I, that's, I just that's, I just go chapter by chapter. But the color system, I like that. I just go like I'm working from chapter 1 to 5 or chapter 5 to 10 or chapter whatever. Well, I just go in a slog. I write dual point of view, though. So mm. I write dual point of view. And so that it, it becomes a little more uh, tricky. And so it's funny because even when I write, I write in colored pens. And each character is assigned a color. So I love you right yeah. now. I totally, oh you wanna, I just adore you right now. <laughs> it's a mess. I'm telling you. If okay, if, if shameless plug, but if you've read Hard Press, you yes. know that the color purple makes it, it's it's a very important color. Yes. Right? Yes. And so, as I when I was writing the first draft, all of Grayson's point of views were written in purple and Presley's was written in like a teal blue. So there were times I would go back and I wanted to, you know, I came across something that, you know, happened in a chapter with Presley and then I wanted to scoot over real quick and see how Grayson reacted to that. So when I have all that color coordinated, it trims the fat. Like it just cuts out a lot of the bullshit when I'm trying to sit down. Like, I can just get to what I want to get to and be done with it. All I can think... I, I'm like, not a patient person, <laughs> so... Right now, though, I've got this vision of, of you know, the normal person who walks into an adult store and sees a wall of vibrators and goes, ooh, there's Peyton walking into the stationery store, seeing the wall of pens and going, ooh... <laughs> yeah. I love a good stationery store. Love a good stationery oh store. Um, yes. Mark, what about colors? Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> do that. No, man. Uh, that would freak me out. I, that's too much. I, I have an. I have a process I work through with my draft, but it's. I'm literally starting. I'm literally take a, a blank document and I'm starting over and I'm, I'm looking at the chapter that I had before. And I'm I'm not I'm not using the same exact words that I used before. I'm trying to get to something a, a, a complete better version. So for me, it helps to feel like I can be free from that version and go into this next version. And um, <coughs> that's so the idea that at some point in my draft, when I'm more in just a little bit smaller fine tuning then yeah but I, even then i don't think i'm going to use colors cuz that that freaks me out the thing is though, like that freaks me out. the color this is so yeah. it's like we're twinning Peyton because the color thing if you heard my workmates at work i have a color coded 
highlighter system at work because that's how I keep everything oh, no. in regiment order and that's how everything gets done precisely. Yes. Oh, I, oh. Oh. And when you're talking colour coding, highlighting, I'd never thought to apply it to my work, but oh, you're totally revving my engine right now. I love it. See, um, yes. I'm yes. learning so much. I think I'm going to apply this. <laughs> I like it. Um I'm curious to see how it works for you, so definitely let us know. Yeah, no, it's it's like a little it's like a little light bulb just went off. <laughs> um, now, so color coding, would you would you adapt that to your writing? Uh, I can't write longhand for one thing. My, my hands are just too big, and I got dick fingers, so they're pretty well useless for handwriting. <laughs> um, <laughs> and okay. <laughs> Whatever. When, when I write, <laughs> I, I generally edit as I go. And then I submit to an editor to trim the 80 million commas that I put that are no longer required for anything. Yeah. But as far as the actual, yeah, the wordage, uh, I don't think that's actually a word, but, um, the words, the, the, the sentence structure, everything else, I, I do it as I go. Um, the only issue I might have to go back occasionally and fix plot holes. Yeah. I can't edit as but, I go. I know that that's, it's not, it's, and it's, you know, don't send me hate mail. It doesn't matter. You can, you can't. It doesn't matter how you do your books. It's all an individual factor. Me personally, if I stop to even just alter like a paragraph or a sentence i get I, my my flow stops the, the, the oh, characters no, I don't actually stop, stop talking i can't stop and start if i'm writing the world uh, just disappears into a nothing and i just write yeah i don't actually stop i i almost never stop and go back it's it's almost never it's generally i might have to slow my typing enough to really think through, to think a few words ahead, to make sure I'm not using the same words or the phrase makes sense and, and the words flow together nicely. Ah, uh, fix that afterwards. All right, quick question though. I'm interested about this. Uh, I'm going to start with Mark. Are you there? I am here. Right. Morning, Mark. <laughs> writing age. <laughs> what do you do to get yourself in the zone for writing? Oh, like before a writing session? Um, no, uh, no. When no during during writing. Well, how do you set up your time limit? Whether you know whether you're sneaking in ten minutes, whether you've got two hours, whatever your your time zone is that you have found. What do you do yeah. to encourage the most amount of productivity to be delivered in that time? Um, I, I will, I usually, so I think we've talked about it a little bit before. I have to kind of be isolated. Like there can't be a lot of activity and craziness around me. So I usually try and find some corner of the house to be alone. Uh, that's almost impossible. Uh, sometimes. So I have these cool little wireless earbud things that I got that are like noise canceling. <clears throat> so Ooh. if I'm all, Mark, you're chopping in and out at the moment, and unless I'm the only one that can hear that. Uh, no, no, I can hear it too. too. Okay. Um, While well, he gets his, the internet is failing him. I'm sorry. No. Um, wait for him to come back. Peyton, how do you get yourself in the zone? I typically, I like to go back and read like the last passage. That just kind of gets my yep. mindset to where I was when I left off. Um, as far as my surroundings, I can't work in complete silence, but I need – I can't be – like, I'm, I'm like, you know, I'm a squirrel. Like, I can't – I'm easily distracted, so I can't <laughs> – I, I will typically have, some, like, the TV on, but – it almost next to like not muted but just a little bit that's usually what i i need to do i don't i dead silence i just drift off yeah um but it i typically you know will put on something that i've already seen 
Ah, uh, right, yeah, I yeah. Just gl- you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I'll, I'll just kind of glance up to it or whatever. Yeah. So that's that's typically, I mean, but mainly it's just going back over um, what I wrote previously. I have discovered that I can't write during the day. Right. And I, I don't know if that's just a mental thing because I have so much other things I need to be doing. Yeah. Um, it's at night when I can kind of cross off all the adulting that I had to do that uh, day. That's when I'm able to write. So I figure I'll sleep when I'm dead. Well, very true, very <laughs> true. For me, I need music. If I'm setting the mood where I need – when I when I've got – uh, that slab of time that I really want to condense as many words as I can into it. I need a cup of coffee. I need a bottle of water. Yes, Peyton, I try to balance the two together. Um, <laughs> and uh, generally something snacky that I can just grab, something that doesn't dirty my fingers. People don't start with me in the chopsticks. It has just something, yes, and I put earbuds in and the music. Now, the music has to be turned really, really, really loud because that way, if anything happens, I've got little kids and, you know, they make noise and, and shit. So um, it's it's cancelling them out. The music becomes irrelevant to me. It becomes like a white noise. I, I do like 80s rock ballads predominantly if anybody's playing at home. Um, a little bit of Journey, a little bit of Toto, you know how it is. Uh and that cancels out the world around me, which allows the, the characters' voices to come in more clearly. Um, it's sort of like it's you cancel out the world in order to hear beyond my world. For me, that's how it works if I really want to slam out a lot of words in one go. How about you, Stephen? How do you uh, get yourself in the zone? Uh, well, generally I like to sit down in a reasonably quiet room. Uh, extremely comfortable clothes. You know, I don't like being, you know, dressed right up like as if I'm going to work because I, I want to be relaxed. And then I want to hit a timer. I want to zone out for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, something like that. And just write. Shut my brain off to everything else and write. Oh, Mark has technical difficulties. He's coming and going. <laughs> but uh, I, and snacks are a must. Coffee is also a must. They're both one and twos. If I don't have them, there's problems. I, um, there will be violence. <laughs> the, the timing aspects is really is really uh, a constructive way for authors to. For for me, it works for me, and it's something that I suggest if people ever uh, sit there and ask you, how do you manage, you know, full time work, children, mm. and writing. Um, and to me, it is. It's those. If you can, it's amazing what you can get down if you lock out twenty minutes. Uh, and if you can lock out mm-hmm. twenty minutes three times a day, you can easily be churning out a thousand, two thousand words per day. And you know, uh, in a few months, you've got a book done. It's really if you compartmentalize it down to you know, every, generally everyone can find twenty minutes in a slot. It's 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 an interesting number to me. Mm. and uh, it's nice to give yourself a little reward you know you do your 20 minutes and then you give yourself a snack or you make yourself a coffee and your brain turns back on for a few minutes and maybe five minutes later you hit that timer again and you're back at it right. it works wonders i like to do that for me I anyway writing, i do writing sprints, yes typically not because of like a time constraint but because like if if I'm having any kind of like writer's block for whatever reason, as soon as I say I'm going to do writing sprints, it's like I'm a, I'm a competitive person, right? So if I'm, <laughs> I'm going to do a 15-minute writing sprint, I will full-on beat myself. You know what I mean? Like I will that, – that's a race to me, and it helps when I have um, just – that block that I just can't get through a chapter or something, the second I go into a writing sprints, I'm good to go. Hmm. Thankfully, I haven't had – lately, I haven't had an issue with writing writer's block, so knock on wood. But when that does happen, those writing sprints help tremendously. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm at the start of a brand-new book, so I don't have <laughs> any any issues with blocking yet. Uh, it's all still very – chatty and and progressive which is nice yes who would have ever thought that Peyton was competitive Brian (laughs) Jesus I know um (laughs) Brian said that yes he did yes he did 
Um, look, I'm the same. If if you get me in a sprinting aspect, and you know, grabbing a few authors together and sitting down and doing an afternoon of sprints is really, really productive, and mm-hmm. and can really spur you along Absolutely. to to get involved. And I get, I do get a wee bit competitive. I I won't deny the fact, and I will overlook spelling errors just to get the word count down because I can go back later and do that. Oh. Um, yeah, I'm just like, whatever, I know what that is. I know what it's supposed to be, and you put a little white line or a blue line or a red line, you're telling me I'll come back to you. <laughs> see, you're already, see, you have a little bit of color coding already in there. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah I am a little OCD, <laughs> as as my workmates tell me. Now, Love of the Hunt, Stephen, I'm going to read the back of this. I want to know where it came from. I want to know the origin of where this story developed from. This is the back for those playing at home. Love of the Hunt by Stephen Ross. This is the blurb. Do you mind me reading it or would you like to read it in your deep, yeah. dark voice? No, what do you want? You go right ahead. All right. So. All right. <clears throat> where I'll use my double A, double five number. <laughs> what? Right here. Ready for those? <clears throat> it was the end of the world for some, the beginning of a new for others, for us. I'd tell you my name. But names mean nothing now. All that matters is the need to feed, the need for flesh. Those humans who remain, nothing more than meat to be hunted and consumed. If they're lucky, some of them, some of us like the sport, maiming, torturing, sometimes worse. There are so few of them now. We've taken to feeding on each other. Safety is nowhere to be found. A strong prey on the weak. We live by the law of the jungle. I remember, though, I had a life once, a real life, a beautiful wife, a son to be proud of. He's gone now, killed from before the end. But she's still with me, changed as I am, a new thing, a violent thing, a hungry thing. I've tried so hard to cling to the final shreds of my humanity, but it's hard, so hard, and I hunger. This is a dark, disturbing, and frankly terrifying book, one that leads the reader to look into themselves, wondering what would they do for hunger, for survival, for love. Where did this come from, sir? How did this come about? <laughs> um, it started out, actually, as, a, as an idea for a very, very short story about a couple of no longer human people who had been together and and the end of the story was essentially she was going to, one of them was going to sacrifice the other so the other could live. They were going to feed on the other. Um, And it, I started to put the words down and it just grew and grew and grew some more. And eventually more characters decided they'd pop their little heads in. And eventually it got to the point where I thought, well, this is now going to be a novella. And I got a little farther down the line, and I realized, no, this is going to be a book. Um, it's, it's going to be my first little baby. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping it's good. I'm hoping it's worth a read. But uh, welcome back, Mark, To He's back in the studio. Um, Mr. Carter. Now, but when you started, you just you were intending to write a short story. Yeah, just something tiny. I. I I had done a, I think I had done a VSS, and it was a, a truncated version of the short story, you know, uh, just one tweet long, and, and I could see this desolate landscape and this sad, pitiful, gaunt couple who had loved each other tremendously, and who only wanted to live, and who only wanted the other to live even more. So it, it it was more of a, almost a dark, kind dark of a romance. love story. I mean, the book itself is. It's a love story. Yeah, the book story. is itself. I mean, a tragedy. Yeah. A tragedy. Absolutely. Ah. <laughs> Did you ever think you were going to write a love story, Stephen? Like. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I, I'm I'm a romantic at heart. Are you? I'm sure you are. Abs- absolutely. Um. I'm going to ask this question because uh, it tickles Mark when I do. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tickle Mark too. Nice. Caffeine. <laughs> <laughs> Caffeine. <laughs> 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 
Plotter or Panzer? Oh, God. Panzer. Yeah, I, I couldn't plot my way in, in, into a pair of pants in the morning to go to work, barely. I, I can't plan stuff ahead. I don't know what's going to happen in a book. I, I don't even know what's going to happen in a poem when I start it. You know, the first line just pops to me or a scene or, or an emotion, a feeling, a visual. That's where everything starts. Usually it's just one almost I, I can sense a color or, or just something so basic. Yes. And that it just grows from there. So your inspiration really can come from anywhere. Absolutely. Absolutely. Peyton, where does your inspiration come from? The, well, the two things I'm working on right now. Of course, the book one came, you know, started with a dream. Um, and then there were a real life situation with a draft uh, prospect at the time. That's where it kind of, you know, because I, I live and breathe baseball, football. So that's always on the brain, I guess, even when I'm sleeping. And so between a little dream and then a real life situation that was going on with um, a draft prospect at the time, um, it just kind of sparked that whole small town Texas football type thing. And then I kind of it just went from there. So it's just I, I like writing about creatives in some way. Yeah. I do I do put athletes in that category. Yes. Because they are very much tuned to their own methods, their delivery. I, I do consider them creatives in a, in a different way. So future projects, I will be writing more athletes and musicians and all that good stuff. So well, you can tune in, totally. Towards yeah, because <laughs> creatives know creatives. So you know, and knowing the cre- the way that the creative brain works, um, you'd be able to relate a lot to the characters and how they think it through. Um, do any of them have color coded obsessions? Oh, well, I know with the purple in the first one, but if somebody's picking up a highlighter somewhere along the line. Oh well, I mean, I have. I mean, Grayson, you know, he he prefers purple. Mm. I mean, it's not a spoiler, or any, it's not a spoiler or anything, but that's the color sharpie he uses to sign his autographs. Yes, he does. Right. Yes. And so, but now in Hell's Bells, Belle is she's a list person. She's she's very you know organized. <laughs> Let's just say that. Like you're writing about <laughs> me. Oh, I love it, Mark. <laughs> Mark, do you um, where do I? Yeah, inspiration. Mm-hmm. Where do you hit when your with your book? Where does inspiration hit you? Where how like how what what inspires you, Mark? Well, mostly I ca- so I call the code name or working title for my novel is uh, called Project Metal, and I used to do this when I was younger. I'd write lyrics or, or poems where I would take uh, like album covers and I would just look at the images and I would be like, oh man, that's 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 a cool image and then I would like build these stories or these these things together out of like these various images and how what could a, a story look like to incorporate these different images and so I started doing that with the songs uh, when I would listen to songs and just as something in my head I've always done where I would listen to songs and I would listen to like bits and pieces of songs or see images and try to put them together and so how would these things fit together and so I think that's a, really it's the simple answer is like other art I think specifically for me, what's inspired this work is is um, largely '80s metal. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Wait, okay. No, uh, just fun. To pick do a couple you, names. Do you yourself have any kind of musical background or? Oh yeah, oh, he does. Oh, yes. yes. Mm. Which is why he's in trouble okay. for not doing me any theme songs, <laughs> Peyton. Well, you just I, you've just yeah. triggered me. <clears throat> uh oh. Uh-oh. I I gave I gave up music to so I could have more time to write is the short answer. But yeah, I I played music okay. for many years in many okay. bands. I play lots of instruments and yeah. Did you ever really give it up or do you? I mean, seriously, if you as as Peyton just said that you know uh, whether you're mm-hmm. playing sport, whether you're writing poetry, books, uh, music, uh, art, 
painting, uh, clay work, it, it really doesn't matter. This is all a creative outlet for our weird ass brains that we possess. So did you really swap one for the other or just find a, a different way well, it to like you found a way to expand expand on, on it exactly so yeah i mean i don't put, like my main one of my main instruments is guitar i don't play guitar anymore so i haven't really played guitar in since before the pandemic started um so i i it's mainly a time thing for me because I'll sit down before and I'd play guitar and, and like four hours would fly by. You know what I mean? I'd be like, whoa, what time is it? Yeah. And I, I don't have that kind of time if I'm writing a book. <laughs> like, do do you find do, do you find it's also a case of it's what you love, what what you feel at the moment? Like for me, I find that there's times where I can write a book or write a chapter of a book and there's times where it's just not happening and I have to write a poem or I have to do a sketch or I have to do something else. It's just not there. Something else is there. I, I think for me with writing, it's, I definitely played around with in different spaces, whether it's uh, short stories or, you know, well, I'm not just writing anything, you know, do you feel, uh, like I it. used to get very inspired to go play, like in just in the moment. I'm like, I need to go play. Um, mm -hmm. And I have those moments now that I'm feeling better about my writing as I've practiced it more. I'm having those moments right now. I'm like, I need to write. I need to sit down and write. Not because, I mean, sometimes because I have something I want to write, right? Like an idea hit. and I'm like, oh, this cool thing. But there's just been moments where I'm just like, I just feel like writing just the act of sitting down and writing so that happens so that's that's starting to happen more and i think that for me it just shows that i'm kind of growing more into my writing and and making that transition more to being a writer which is one of my goals so it's it's i i like it but I will. I, I may pick up music one day and do it again you know but for right now like my son's doing it He's, he started doing music, and so I talk about it with him, and I'll give him pointers and stuff, and he's playing guitar and stuff now. So I there's a little bit of that alive through him, which for mm. now I'm fine with that. Vicarious. Yes. See, I could never – I was always sworn to only doing one thing at a time, and as T.O.'s just mentioned that he's writing two books at once now – um, and, and as Stephen just said that, you know, if you're stuck on one, do you swap to another or even find a different creative outlet? Like you just mentioned that if you, if you don't see the words on your novel coming at that point in time, you, you will might try a VSS or you might try a, a poem or something else that's still in the creative field, still gets those juices rolling, mm -hmm. um, keeps you in touch with that side of your brain, uh, but not necessarily on the same project at once. Now, I was always 100% dead set, book, one book at a time, start to finish, whatever else. I found myself now with two on the go, and I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is that shit? It's ridiculous. Actually, I've got three. I've, I've, oh, my God. Three. What is happening in the world? Pineapple? Mm. Pineapple? I can't. God. <laughs> I want to read this poem quickly of yours, sir, for, for um, the people at home. This one, I really relate to this poem um it's beautiful and it's tragic and it's it, it's on your website so you've got it up there for people to see so i'm going to read it if that's all right before we play book of feud and and <clears throat> see what's going on okay, okay this is have i got your permission to do that Stephen? absolutely all right this is called gone by Stephen ross will you miss me when i'm gone when the door closes, one last time, the sheets on my side turn cold. When my voice becomes an echo of a memory, my face an insubstantial blur, my life a thing forgotten, my avatar a headstone. Tell me, will you miss me? I love that. I love that. Your words can be very dark, very um, thought 
Tragic. Yes. I keep going back to tragic. Yes. Uh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they're very playful. I've seen a very large gamut uh, of poems from you. Everything from something that's very mm. erotic, something very playful, something very silly, and then other ones that just rip your heart out and show it to you in your face and go, mm hmm. You know. I, I write what I'm feeling. Um, so if I'm, the erotic poems come whenever that's inside of me. The, the horror, the, the tragedy, the, you know, just the awful stuff. It's, it's when that's sitting right at the back of my skull. Uh. And, and the funny stuff, eh, sometimes I just like to be funny. I'm a funny guy. <laughs> Are you? Are you just no? Are and, you well, might be. Oh, well, ask Brian about my nipples. I'm not. Yeah. We're not bringing. <laughs> <laughs> we're not bringing this up. All right, all right. Well, uh, congratulations on Love of the Hunt. It's a fabulous book, and I suggest everybody should read it. Even those who, you know, might not be a, a massive lover of horror, the the horror in it is certainly well placed. Um, you know, sometimes Thank when you. you're reading a, a, a horror book and even though you're prepared for it to be really gruesome, and, it, and, and there are parts that are, but it doesn't seem quite as gruesome because it's relevant to the story. So it, it's palatable horror, if, if that's a way of putting it. It's purposeful horror. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, right. Oh, it's time, uh, as our favourite time of the podcast, to play Book of Feud. Da, 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 da. Yes, Mark. Thank you for the music. Yeah. Appreciate it. Uh, <laughs> 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 oh, look, I am going to get the music organized because it's doing my head in. I really am not musically inclined. Um, right, for those playing at home, this is a game we play at the end of the podcast called Book of Feud, which is like family feud, but for legal reasons, we call it Book of Feud. I have an actual family feud question in front of me where 100 Americans have been surveyed. I have the top five answers uh, staring me in the face. Uh, Sir, Stephen, as our guest, uh, you can choose which team you wish to be on. Would you like to be on team Mark or would you like to be on team Peyton? I'm not going to give you the, the, the uh, ratios right. or anything else because you play along most of oh, the time oh, anyway. I know them. I know them. Yeah. Um, okay. Do I want to be on Team Payton? Yes, absolutely, because, you know, I want to you know, basically win. Um, but here's there's two things. A, I, I love a challenge. And B, if I go on Team Payton and she loses, I'm afraid she might beat me. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to be the one that messes up her streak. No. Right? No. 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 <laughs> No, that's I'm, my job. To I'm crucify job. you. <laughs> I'm very delicate. Yes, that would be a problem. Mm. So you're t choosing Team Mark? Yeah, I think we'll go Team Mark. Boys against I'm, girls. I'm going to help you out, buddy. All right, Tia and Brian in the All field. Right. Um, Sausage fest. You might want to You can, uh, feel free to chuck up some answers and help out, uh, although Peyton does have a, the, the winning streak, so she might not need your help, but she would always appreciate it. Mm. Always appreciate it. Um, all right, team, Stephen and Mark, what team name do you guys want? Um, uh, okay, in, in honor of Brian in, in the chat, Team yes. Nipples. Oh, God. All right, Team Nipples. It's, We're it's going team, team Nipples. Nipples. It's not the... Guys, guys have them. Guys have them, too. We do. shame in this game. Yes. I, I can see mine staring right at my computer screen right now. You know, Mark, Mark, <laughs> Mark. Yes. This yes. isn't this isn't the worst team name that you've had. <laughs> no, no, probably not. not. No, I think Little Dick probably was a small man. Yeah, Little Dick was. <laughs> I think that was the top one. So you know, you it, it's not it's not too yeah. shabby. And that one you did to yourself. <laughs> okay. Well, I thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I did do that to myself. That's true. <laughs> Peyton, how are you going to compensate for this one? What what team name would you like? The challenge has already started, isn't it? It's like, oh, good Lord. Uh, okay, so for your birthday, we're going to do pineapple. Pineapple. Ooh. Pineapple. God, I love a good pineapple. <laughs> 
do you know, mm. on a side note, it was only recently discovered, or for me, I only recently discovered what the pineapple emoji means, up the right way and upside down. Uh, that was a new, you know, I'm today years old when I understood what the pineapple nice. meant. And I went, oh, okay. Right. Interesting. Our sweet, innocent Z. Ah, yeah, well, you know, I thought so. I thought so. All right. <laughs> team nipples and team pineapple. Of course, I will air, uh, ask the question first. Team in with their team name gets to go first, and we will alternate till we find an answer. Um, right. It's been moderately themed to our guests, so let's see how we go. The question is... Name something. Name something people do for fun, even though it scares them. Nipples. <laughs> He's in. Jesus Christ. Those nipples were up, ready to go. Team right. nipples. Mark nipples and, are up. Of course, yeah, you guys, you guys can confer before you give me the final answer, but there will be a time limit on your conferring. Name something people All do right. for fun, even though it scares them. Okay, you beat me to the punch, so I'm assuming you have something that's very good. Oh, uh, well, I was going to say uh, something like skydiving. Ah, right. you do have something very good, because that's what I was thinking of. Think of that? All right. We're going to that. Sk skydiving. Is that your final answer? Is that your final answer? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> skydiving. I'm sorry, Stephen. Who's the host here? Who oh, is the oh, host of oh. this? <laughs> Jesus. I, I should be afraid of you too, I suppose. I'd be very afraid of Peyton and I will take you out the back alley and beat you up. All right, skydiving is well, a, hey, hey, on don't, the, hey, don't, don't, beat, don't, don't beat the nipples. <laughs> yeah, on yeah, the list, be, boys. Be, be, be gentle with me. On the list, number four, ding, 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 ding. Oh, yeah, good Lord. All right. <laughs> oh, Peyton, I need your help, girl. I need your help. <laughs> Name something people do for fun even though it scares them. Roller coasters. Is that your top, your final answer? Yes. It is top of the list, number one. Well done. Ding, ding, ding. Hmm. Yeah, 51 people, 51 of the 100 went for uh, lower <laughs> cocaine. Cocaine is not on the list here. <laughs> cocaine is not it's on the list. Uh, <laughs> people do it, though. <laughs> oh, I don't know if they're doing it for fun. Oh, well, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I think they are. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> Certainly scares me. Um, team Nipples. Team Nipples. Name something people do for fun, even though it scares them so far. We have roller coasters and skydiving. Uh, unprotected sex? Wait, no, no, never mind. No, no. Pineapple. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think people do that. I don't think uh, people right. doing it. All right, let's, uh, what, let's see. Let's brainstorm. Uh, I, I like T.O.'s. T.O.'s got a great answer. It's not cocaine. Oh. oh. No, so the I other one. Fast. Going no. Fast. Fun house. Oh, fun house. Like yeah, haunted, haunted house, house, fun house. Yeah. Go in a haunted house. Uh, yeah, yeah, haunted slash that. fun house. Yeah. I like that. I a think, haunted house think? sounds good. What do you think? Yeah, I like that. I like that. It scares people, but they like to be scared. I can totally see that working. Is that you? Yeah. All right. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, wait, wait, wait. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Or, 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 watch, or. watch horror movies. Yeah. It's a scary movie. Right, scary movie. That's kind of in the same vein. You're going to need to give me an trying. answer, guys. Mm. Mm. Name something people do for uh, fun, I'm, even I'm, though it scares them. It says, I, I'm, this, I'm leaning they towards Haunted do. House because it's more of a do. Like, yeah, you All watch right. it, it's a doing, but I'm thinking Haunted House. All right. One. All right, I'll I'll defer, and that way, if if you're wrong, well, you know, it's on me. Okay, I can accept that. Okay, it's all my fault. Okay, final answer: haunted house. It's Absolutely. on the list. Ding, ding, ding. It's number five. Yes. Number five on the list, yeah. right down the bottom. But skating in with eight people. Eight hey, people hey. said that. It's on the list. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. Team Pineapple, Peyton, my darling, name something people yeah. do for fun even though it scares them. So far we have roller coasters, skydiving, and fun houses. Okay, I will go with the horror movies. 
Is that for sure? Is that your final answer? Right. Yeah. It's on the list. Ding, ding, ding. Yes, it's number three. Ooh. Number three. Oh, number three yeah. on the list with 11 people. We have a number two answer and a tiebreaker situation. A tiebreaker mm. situation. I'm not giving any clues. Oh, no, I might give a clue. Will I give a oh. clue? I should give a clue because that way first person in with their team name gets to go first and take oh, a yeah. chance at winning. Um, oh. Okay. If right. I'm gonna I'm gonna play right. this though, that if you chime in and you get it wrong, I will give the other person an extra clue. Just Oh hey. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 it's on. Oh, you, you know really Mark's gonna go it. preemptive. The clue I don't know. <laughs> is the clue is um <clears throat> it's it's only for the strong of heart. Name something people do for fun, even though it scares them. Pineapple. Pineapple. Oh, she's in hard. Mm. All right. Peyton. <sighs> Rock climbing. Rock climbing. You went very hard on that. That's a very affirmative <sighs> answer you've given. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yes. Yeah. I used to date an adrenaline freak, so. Is, mm. Number two's answer is definitely adrenaline filled. Is that... Your final answer. Yes. Uh oh. Not on the list. Oh. <laughs> right. Right. We get an extra oh, clue. Look at that. Mark's, Mark's oh, then was not. It's oh. not a de- I'm not salivating a bad right one. now. The extra clue is um, you can do it from a number of different. Venues. Uh, um, and you can do it solo or trios or groups. Uh, you can you can multitask this one. Are we still talking? Are we still Correct. talking about unprotected sex? No, but you can do it in groups. Name something people do for fun, even though it scares them. Mark. Will help. Oh, oh! Wait oh. a second. Oh, you can do it. Wait. So you're saying you can do it by yourself or within a group? Yes. Is that the clue? Yes. In a variety of different venues. I'm gonna say. Okay. I'm gonna say sing. Sing. Ah, oh, yes. Um. What do you think? I think it's something like that. I think it's along uh, uh, those lines. It always gets complicated. It doesn't yeah, have I'm, 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 <laughs> <laughs> If you don't feel good about it, I understand. Totally it, it, understand. I'm not feeling like I got anything better. That's the problem right now. Uh, Name something people on this do. side of the mic, man. I'll tell you. Name something people do for fun. <laughs> dance. Even though it scares them. gio has got dance. It's, could it, it's it's something like that. Dancing, singing. Yeah, I think it's in that vein. Pub, pub, I need yeah. a final oh, answer, nipples. No. <laughs> for, fan, for fun, though, I don't think it's public speaking. I think it's between singing and dancing. Which one? What do you think, sir? Uh, different venues. A number of different venues. That's why I was thinking. Hmm. <sighs> Maybe maybe you want to lean towards dancing? Uh, I'm just humming my ass off here. Uh, yeah, I I, I, I guess. You got excited when that yeah, popped up. I did get excited. Well, you know, not that excited, but. Oh, okay. Um, oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, you're still good. Um, all right. What the hell? I need a final right, answer. We're going with dancing. Dancing. Yeah. Final answer. Papa, not on the list. That was an awful lot of debating for something that was not on the list. You're not even close. Not even close. <laughs> oh. It's not, not, you're not even close. Um, so, so. Can you, okay, what, what have we said so far? Okay, I'll go back through the clues and I'll give you another one because this is the way it's playing out. Gosh. Um, name something people do for fun even though it scares them. This can be done in different areas. I never said venues, I said areas. Um, uh, it can be done solo. It can be done in groups, duos. Uh, you probably probably wouldn't do it more than three. I don't think I've seen it done with more than three people. Definitely seen it done most common with 
who. Um, and even the third clue for that, Peyton, is that it, I have seen it done not on land. Oh, okay. And, and what have we said so far? Uh, they've said dance. Um, cocaine was ruled out earlier. Um, I mean the right. Oh, the roller coasters, horror movies, skydiving, and fun houses. They're the four answers that we have so far. Okay, I I think I got it. Right. Bun- bungee jumping. Oh yeah, you got it. Is that your final answer? You yes. Ding ding ding! It's on the list, and you are out of here, Peyton. <laughs> 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 I, I, I bow to the queen. Oh, congratulations, Peyton. You reign supreme, girlfriend. You reign supreme. Thank you. Ah, oh, well done. I'm caffeine. Yay. <laughs> we need to get her a crown. Pineapple. Pineapple. <laughs> Commiserations, Stephen and Mark. Uh, you tried, you tried uh, well. Yeah, you, okay. you, you, you went off, you went off fast. You just didn't close it, but you went off uh, fast. Well done. Exactly. I'm, yeah, I'm not going to say no. that's a man thing. <laughs> but I would. It's a man thing. I've never had that issue. <laughs> Charge in. No closure. I got it. Congre- Congratulations, Peyton. Well done. And now still at 100%, batting full 100%. Oh. That's, it's a stout. Sorry, Mark. Oh, there wasn't much help she, today. Hey, she just beat nipples. There's nothing we can do. She did. She did. She did. She just... I'm going to put on my tassels and go home and cry. <laughs> okay, me too. Oh, my God. We could dance, we could dance up on stage and be for fun and be scared. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> All right. So for those playing at home, we've been listening to, we've been listening to Stephen Ross, uh, author of Light and Night, which is the poetry book, and Love of the Hunt, which is his novel. Um, stalk him, of course, uh, at the real Sir Three, uh, both on Twitter and uh, the Gram, um, to follow his poetry, uh, follow what the assessors he's doing, what he's up to. Look, stalk him for his tattoos alone. Um, they're pretty impressive mm. as well. Uh, buy the book, uh, taste, taste it, and I do mean that in a visceral manner. Uh, it's definitely something that's going to leave a mark on you, I do believe. Uh, you'll love it. Nice. Um, thank you for being here, Stephen. It has been, as I expected, full of shenanigans. Woo! Uh, yeah, thank you for having me, uh, everybody. I, I really love being on the show. It's a terrific show, so uh, yeah, just thank you. We we are we are a fabulous trio to be a part of. Absolutely, I will not deny you guys are awesome. the the phenomenal talent of uh, MB Davis. Mark, of course, you are amazing. I love you. Um, Thank you. Uh, you are a loser in I, Book of Feud, but you know. I am. But, I am, but but I do want to. F- before you take us all the way out, tell you happy thir- uh, birthday once again. Uh, thank if, you. Even though it's Absolutely. past technically, but yeah. but happy hope you birthday. enjoy today too. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm taking my kids out to see the Minion movie this afternoon. Oh, I can't Ooh, wait nice. to go see The Rise of Gru. Oh, God, I'm such a nice. kid. When you put animated movies up and popcorn, <laughs> I'm totally on board. Uh, of course, our other nice. trio, the, the far more gorgeous one of the three of us, Peyton Storm. Uh, love you. Love you. Uh, and uh, it's just a brilliant to have the three of us together. Uh, we do well. We do well. You guys are awesome. Uh, buy Hell's Bells, of cool. course. People grab that book, uh, Love of the Hunt, and stalk us all. We love it. Give us feedback. Oh, quickly, just quickly, before I go. Hmm. Um, now, hang on, let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. I had it up before. Do you write every day? The poll that was on Book of Feud. 66.7% uh, of people said yes, they do write every day to some degree, uh, which I thought was uh, an interesting thing that uh, two thirds of us are writing uh, every day or attempting to write every day. So that's, that's cool. I would have, I would have thought it'd be higher than that. Uh, honestly. I, I thought two thirds was pretty good. I, that was, yeah, interesting. Huh. Well, see, huh. check on our Twitter page. Sorry for those playing at home to see what today's poll will be when we whack it up. Uh, 
Um, also, real, real quick before we go, yep. um, and, I, and I don't want to mess up her last name, but I just wanted to take a moment for everyone to just recognize um, that we did lose mm-hmm. one of our yes. arms recently. Yes. Yeah. Dawn, um, mm-hmm. she fought very, very hard. And uh, unfortunately, that, that fight came to an end recently. So just take a moment to think of her and her family um, and keep her words uh, out there. And, you know, mm-hmm. if you go to her uh, profile, there is a GoFundMe for the family, all of that. So definitely check that out and just keep her and hers, you know, in your thoughts and prayers. Funny, Dawn, um, Absolutely. Dawn was one of my most closest Absolutely. riding community friends that I have. Uh, or ha- have have she's still always been my friend no matter what and her loss um was it was deeply felt by me uh i'm not sure i've processed it completely but uh there's been many a many late night that she kept me riding and kept me focused and i hope i did the same for her at different times um and her words and her kindness and her support will always, always be with me. I will miss her forever. She's, she was, yeah, go, go to her page, help out the family, buy her books. That also helps out the family. You not yes. only do you get to yeah. read some of her gorgeous words, but you also get to help out her family that way too. So, um, you know, there's many ways that we can, uh, keep Dawn, Dawn's words right. alive with us, but also Even help sharing, out her. Yeah, you know. exactly. Just sharing yeah. the content, you know. Yeah. Helps. She was she was a, a very brave and beautiful soul. All right. Thank you for mentioning that. Um, all right. We will see you all next week. Uh, same podcast time, same podcast channel, different podcast guest, and let's let, we'll see what sort of shenanigans, shenanigans we get up to then. Mm. Oh, I can't even get my words out. All right. <laughs> Till then, we love you all. Stay safe. Goodbye for now. Bye. Bye.